I pulled a few quotes from our guest website to set the tone of this podcast. The first one, your mouth is the gateway to the rest of your body. Or there's this one, treating one tooth at a time ignores the forest for the trees. No tooth exists in a vacuum. And who could forget Basham's famous quote, terrain is everything, the microbe is nothing. Mm-hmm. Yep, we're back into that interplay between toxicity and infections, specifically in your mouth. This is the story of dental infections with the biodentist, Dr. John Augsburger. Now, Dr. John, uh, great to see you. Um, it's wonderful that you could join us. Yep. I know you, you've been working since you were a teenager and in this field, and you worked around some amazing dentists, uh, one of the greats, Dr. Hal Huggins. Can you talk mm-hmm. about your experience of how you got into this and how you got to work with someone like Hal Huggins, Dr. Rao, and others on this journey into becoming the biodentist? Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting how it all Fold, unfolded in my lifetime. Um, so my dad was an orthodontist. And in high school, I became a lab technician. So I got good at delivering, making appliances, Hollies, uh, orthodontic appliances, bending wires, delivering appliances um, in patients' mouths. So I got proficient with my hands at not only making them, but delivering them. Um, and then as I went through college, I always loved sciences, but I'm also an art, you know, I'm very much of an artist. Um, uh, I'm a musician. I play drums and percussion. Uh, that's really what I wanted to do um, at that time in my life. But uh, there, one day I just got accepted to dental school and um, it just seemed like that was the most important thing to do rather than go to Los Angeles and live out of a car trying to be a drummer. And so uh, four years later, I became a dentist. Um, During my dental training, I learned that dentists had the highest suicide and divorce rate of any profession. And that was back in the late 80s. So for me, the writing was on the wall a little bit, but I didn't know what I didn't know. I went through, obviously went through a very traditional training, um, which is what I call my tooth mechanic training. Um, It's not about disease in the mouth. It's about repair. Okay. And the insurance driven um, incentivization to a disease care system. You know, I didn't understand all that at the time, um, but that all occurred in Iowa. And then in 1990, I moved to Colorado. I happened to land in Colorado Springs right out of dental school. And I went to work for Blue Cross Blue Shield, which is, you know, a very big insurance company. And I, I noticed that I was just doing things to people and using mercury and getting ex- very different results with um, the same procedures done in different patients. So for instance, like you do a filling on Mrs. Jones and you do a filling on Mr. Jones in the same day, same procedure, but one patient has a lot of pain and is uh, angry and the other patient is just fine. So I that was another clue to me that, that there's more to this than just being a tooth mechanic. Um, and at the time being in an insurance driven environment, I was, I was, you know, forced to be under a lot of production, uh, uh, you know, just, you were forced to produce. And it just felt to me like it was more about money than it was about health. And I was doing things like placing dissimilar metals in a wet acid environment called the mouth, you know, setting up batteries, uh, and doing, you know, killing teeth, doing root canals when there's toothaches. Which is a which is a, I call that the taxidermy appointment for your tooth, uh, or an embalming. You know, the the, the day you got your tooth embalmed, um, and because it's kind of like going to a doctor and saying, "Doctor, my finger hurts," and the doctor says, "We're going to take away the blood supply," and you get to keep your finger, you know, but your finger is going to turn black and blue and green and stink, and but you can keep it and it won't hurt, you know. And so it so early in my dental career. Um, I happened to be watching CBS News 60 Minutes on a Sunday night and a guy named Hal Huggins comes on. And the conversation is around mercury and dentistry. And um, Dr. Huggins got on there and said, uh, we have science now that indicates that with this, this material doesn't belong in your teeth and it's very toxic and it off gases um, under many conditions that are common to the mouth. Um, and that caught my attention. So I called Dr. Huggins up and I said, Hey, I, I, um, I'm a young dentist here in town. I want to, I want to talk to you. And he hired me that night at dinner to be one of his dentists, because I'm also a lab technician. 
And I was local in town and I had an office. And so uh, I started working with Hal and then um, uh, shortly, and Tom Levy was involved as well. Dr. Tom Levy, who's a cardiologist in Colorado Springs. And um, shortly thereafter, Dr. H- uh, the 60 Minutes program, Dr. Huggins Clinic got shut down by the dental board. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's a big reason why Tom Levy became a, a, an attorney to, to defend Hal. But what happened after that is I got involved in the research on root canals because since Weston Price in 1939, there isn't there had been no science uh, that I was aware of um, on the inside what's inside of a a, a dead tooth, and so uh, Dr. Huggins knew a guy named Boyd Haley, uh, head of biochemistry at the University of Kentucky, that had the science that I could could identify anything based on molecular weight. So Huggins was smart enough to know that the inside of a dead tooth was gases and we just didn't know what the gases were. We just knew they were dangerous and stinky. Right. So um, fast forward to a movie came out about this called root cause. It came out in 2019. That's in a movie that talks about the science that was performed. Basically a dozen dentists got together and extracted 5,000 teeth and sent them to Boyd Haley over the course of two years. And Boyd Haley was able to identify that we're dealing with hydrogen sulfide gas, um, methyl mercaptan, and and thioethers, all of which have a uh, denaturing effect on metabolic enzymes inside the mitochondria. So in other words, this is a reason why gangrene, the treatment for gangrene has always been death. Or I'm sorry, the treatment for for death has always been amputation, sorry. (laughs) Um, Right. So... um, uh, ever, you know, always. And, and dentistry is the only profession <clears throat> that thinks that we can disinfect the inside of a tooth that has 80 million nerve endings inside. You know, we've got these miles and miles of tubules. That's all soft tissue. And once it loses its blood supply and it loses its fluid flow, there's no way to seal even, even these root canals that are done with lasers. Um, uh, you can powerfully disinfect the inside of a tooth, but you can't sterilize it. And even if, even if you could, it wouldn't stay that way. And you can't seal it. And there's a lot of dentists that think you can, but no, you can't. Um, and, and since the advent of three-dimensional x-rays, we've been able to see just how much disease we're, re- we're really dealing with um, around not only root canal teeth, but all dead teeth and cavitations. So um, so anyway, back to uh, the study. So if anybody is wants to familiarize themselves with the study that was done on root canals, um, I would suggest they check out the movie Root Cause. Of course, that movie didn't last long. Uh, it was taken down very quickly as because the dental profession doesn't want to have that conversation around uh, you know the, the standard of care of a toothache being an embalming procedure instead of what's you instead of what it takes to save the life of the tooth, which I'll get into um, later in the conversation here. Um, So, uh, so I was involved in the study of the science on root canals in the late nineties. And then in mid about 2016, um, my beloved and I decided to uh, seek out the best healthcare in the world. And we found it in, we found what, what we found was in Switzerland at the time, it was Dr. Thomas Rao at the Paracelsus Clinic. Um, I, and I knew about Dr. Rao for many years because he has such an international reputation for uh, being one who can really cure a complex chronic disease. And he also had a dental clinic in his um, private hospital in Switzerland. So that was a very interesting concept for me to go study under in a different country um study what is what's the magic there to um not only healing a patients completely but to involve the mouth in an in an experience called getting your health back um because like i said earlier dentists are trained to be nothing but tooth mechanics um and it's not about the disease it's about the repair so um so here we are learning swiss biological medicine uh, in Europe, and about the same time, uh, I went through the ACIMD program with Dr. Malika uh, to become a naturopath. So I have two medical degrees as a naturopath, um, but I have a license as a dentist. I'm a dentist, um, but I really wanted the education not only inside the U.S. but outside the U.S. so that I could really develop what what now is called the biodentist way, which is really a protocol 
that um, we get the body involved in a dental experience so that we can do really, really mainly do two things to number one, save the life of a tooth. And number two, to change the conditions in the body so that when we have this assault on the body called the septic experience called taking out the dead teeth, okay, which which is surgically removing, extracting teeth and the poisons around them that surround the ligament and the jawbone, and including the cavitation sites as well, where, where teeth were pulled many years ago, typically wisdom teeth. So when we have, so we, so I built this protocol. And it just, it goes way beyond nutrition. It's really about changing the conditions in the body. <clears throat> and in Swiss biological medicine is really about drainage, okay, in many ways. So, um, so we, uh, so in 2016, I was really starting to develop the concept around uh, how to get the body involved. So what we have here in Denver now is a, uh, a separate clinic called BioVital which is under medical directorship. Okay. It's not under my license. It's under the license of an M license MD. Um, and we have biodentists here at um, our location in Denver called the human universal health Institute. It's H U H Institute.com. And so we in a home of biodentist and biovital. So really it's a, it's a biological medical center that's wrapped around a dental experience here. So we, we work since 2016. We've been developing that, um, and uh, currently, um, I'm still practicing dentistry for a little while longer. Um, I'm writing a book right now about this, and just it's really going to be a groundbreaking um, way to bring health and education to the uh, not only the people who are interested in health sovereignty, okay, but really are are looking at the conditions in their mouth. And, um, and really, uh, just making the decision that's like, wow, maybe my mouth is the reason why I'm sick and why I can't get somewhere. So, um, so that's really what, um, our work is here in Denver is to work very closely with a, with a few select people that really want to, um, involve their body and their health in a way that, um, is deeply biological. Um, and, um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're after, you know, building the mouth in such a way where it just is incredibly stable long-term teeth are long, sharp, and beautiful and balanced and, um, um, and non-toxic. So, you know, it's quite the journey typically for most patients that work with us, but, uh, my goal is to work myself and every other dentist out of a job. So, <laughs> <laughs> truly. Yeah, it, it's one of the fields that is, uh, yeah, when when you're one side of the field and you're learning about it, you're in a completely different paradigm than what this is, what biodentistry, what Dr. Rao Huggins and others are doing. And I, I had Dr. Rao on, I believe his podcast goes live in a couple of days. And okay. a lot of what European biological medicine is about, what Paracelsus Clinic and what he does with biomedicine is looking at toxic burden and how many people carry such a large toxic burden with them that then relates to infections, but also vice versa. And as you stated, when infection is present, true doc detoxification is not possible. Can yeah. you go into why that is the, the case? Because I can understand in a very toxic environment, infection is possible. It's the mm -hmm. case my father always brings up is you have a house with garbage all around, you're going to have pests, cockroaches, <laughs> rats, whatever. As long as it's messy, it's going to have those. But go into the other way of seeing it, what detoxification infection really yeah. yeah, great question. So so mm -hmm. there's there's a I, I see chronic infections as really the wild card as to people's health. Um and uh, when you, so let's talk about that. So when you have a chronic infection or, or even an acute infection, you have an inflammatory response around that. Okay. So you have pain, swelling, redness, and fever, right? Those are tools that the body uses, okay. In order to uh, quarantine or break down or mobilize or, or save the body, you know, get the immune system in there, get more blood flow, use temperature and, you know, using fever, the body's very smart and knows what it's doing. Um, but when you have these chronic infections, especially these infections in the mouth that don't hurt, okay, and that's the key thing, 
is uh, cavitation. I rarely do patients come in here and talk about cavitations as these are painful things. You know, I'm usually the one saying we got a situation here based on what we see. Uh, but the chronic infections, you have an inflammatory response by design. Okay. And what, uh, when you have a chronic inflammatory response, that's going to be, that's going to be an, uh, it's going to create a acidity in the body. It's going to, it's going to demand a lot of energy from the body. So, um, and what, when you have that acidity and that, that, uh, demand for higher energy, we're also going to have a, you're going to have a pro oxidant system that's kicked in. So, and the, the, you know, uh, detoxification and inflammation are actually opposites. So inflammation is an oxidant system and detoxification is an antioxidant system. Okay. And when you have this oxidant system being called upon all the time, that is going to depress the body's ability to detoxify, which is going to increase the body's toxicity because the body needs to do- detoxify all the time. But when it's being suppressed, by a chronic infection and a chronic inflammation, then toxicity toxicity is just going to be going up. So I don't believe, now I'm just a dentist, okay? But I don't think detoxification, the time for detoxification is not when there's dental infections in the mouth, Mm -hmm. okay? So, and then when, so the last bit of this is when you have chronic inflammation, oxidant system, depressed detoxification and increased toxicity as a result of that, which is the antioxidant system, you're going to have a lowered immune response with that as well. So you've got this vicious cycle going probably in two directions. And the, like I said, the wild card is getting the infections out of the, out of the body. And they happen to live mostly in the mouth because the jawbone is, especially the mandible, the mandible is, is a unique bone. It's kind of out and back as far as the, the, the blood supply and the, the, uh, yeah, the blood supply and, um, you know, where it's different than other bones like that. And, and it's different And the maxilla and the mandible are also different because they have these little white things sticking out. Right. So it's the only place in our body where we have this gut wall that has been, uh, by design been penetrated by a tooth. And so that, that junction, that gap junction of the wet skin called the gut is so important that we don't have a leaky gut there. Okay. And when we have these chronic underlying problems and these chronic inflammations that people are deep dealing with, these gap junctions are going to be become, they're going to be stressed out. And they're, you know, we, we're going to have this leaky gut thing. And um, and it really starts in the mouth because the mouth is kind of upstream from the entire gut system. That's this gateway to the mouth thing. And it's kind of like if you poison a stream way upstream, it kind of screws up the river. And um, the mouth is really the source of this. And the source is being the dead teeth, the root canals, the cavitations, like I said, that don't hurt, that the dentists are not carefully looking at, at this problem, uh, and the cavitations in the old extraction sites. So, um, so, and, and the process of going through this is way outside the scope of just a dental experience, in my opinion. Like you don't go to a dentist and get a, a, an abscess tooth pulled otherwise and, and involve the body in this process in biological medicine. Otherwise, you're going to be on antibiotics, which kill the gut biome, which is hugely important, okay? And you're going to possibly need pain pills. And I tell my patients, I don't use pain pills because I don't need them because our patients don't hurt afterwards. And I'm strict about our protocol, how I take a dead teeth out. I don't take them out one at a time. I don't take cavitations out one at a time, ever. That's breaking the law of biology. When there is death in the body, the body wants it all out, not some of it out, all of it out in a safe experience. So protecting the body through the assault of the septic experience called getting a tooth pull. And if there's another root canal somewhere else in the mouth, how is the body going to heal the wound that has just been created? Especially if there's been an open hole left there. Okay. I believe the ligament needs to come out. You need to reestablish that blood supply. I'm constantly looking for cavitations around dead teeth when I pull root canals because they're there because they can, because the you know, dead teeth are off gassing, creating all kinds of death around the bone around them. So we got to, you know, dentistry has really got to take a close look at the current situation with 
um, <clears throat> with dead teeth and how that's treated and, and get and and I prepare my patients well in advance of this experience. You know, they come to Denver, they stay with us. You know, we have a nursing, you know, we have a medical clinic. They, they spend time with our nurses. We get colonics involved with ozone gas. We treat the gut system. We treat the extracellular matrix. This is really critical. We treat the, 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 what I call the inner ocean. Okay. You clean the ocean. This is where the cells are pooping in the body. You've got to make the ocean clean so that when the onslaught of removing the dental infections happens, and, and like I said, it's, it happens all at once. And people are sometimes so afraid of us. Like, well, isn't that too much? And I was like, no, it's the other way around. Mm-hmm. You know, if you leave a little infection over there and you miss it, it's just like leaving a little fire over there to the fire department. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, we got trees surrounding us here in buildings. And I tell my patients like, okay, if we got a grass fire and a bunch of, and we got a forest fire, and we got a building on fire and a house on fire over there. Do you think the fire department is going to show up and say, you know, we, you know, we're just not going to put that one out today because your insurance doesn't cover it. Mm-hmm. Or we just, we're not going to put that one out today because you can't afford that. You know, disease doesn't care how much money you have. Okay. And it, it and this is why I'm training dentists right now. Okay. This is why we have the biodentist way. There's a way, there's a methodology, a protocol that is a culmination of many years of, of studying of like kind of doing it a certain way and then now doing it the way I do it now. And the reason why I'm strict in my protocols is because I tell my patients our goal is no pain and no swelling. And to wake up the next morning after a surgery like that and have your blood be cleaner than it's been in decades. So that you can, so that now your body can take all that energy that was required to 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 power that inflammatory response, and power the detoxification systems in the body, and power the immune system. Okay, all the energy that that's required to to manage. Now we've pulled the. It's a rug pull. We pull the rug on the reason why the body has problems powering all these systems at the same time unless you got a ton of energy but but anyway this is the rug pull on the problem called why am i so darn sick right and you know (laughs) and i and i look at how we do this now and it's you know it's just such a beautiful thing because people i think people what they want is they want health sovereignty yeah Right. And when when there's all the sickness in the world and going on, people just want to be healthy and not have to go to doctors to, for their standard of care, disease control, disease uh, care, um, ways of treating things and looking at things. So um, anyway, I'm sorry, that might have been a long story, but no, uh, no. I hope that answers your question on just really how this whole thing, how the mouth and the body are so intimately connected and so involved with each other that, you know. Absolutely. No, I mean, when I listen to this, this is truly a holistic and artistic interpretation of what dentistry should be. It yeah. is, you know, uh, the next step, I believe, where it needs to go and, and should be already at. And yeah. if anyone's listening and wondering, well, how would I know if it's not any pain to it, any infection? I'll, I'll give a quick case because I've had Fraser on Bailey, who was behind Root Cause, the documentary oh. who was made over, who my father first identified. I remember years before he right. made that, first said, hey, you got a tooth problem, right? I'm seeing this now. And that's because yeah. he went everywhere and he had chronic fatigue. So that was his yeah. issue. Young guy, healthy guy got punched, you know, and yep. had a root canal and the whole story goes on yep. from there. But yep. it was chronic fatigue. It was just malaise. It was, you know, not feeling himself, depression, these sort of things that come along. So yep. he, no one was going to tell him it was due to his teeth, right? That was the last thing most doctors told him. Right. And it was only after, you know, my father said and a few other people said, hey, what about your teeth, right? And then he got mm-hmm. cone beam imaging found, you know, the pocket there that was infected and causing all of this. Um, Now, if anyone's listening and say, okay, I might have some of that. I have a root canal or I've been thinking about something in my teeth may be the issue. Would you say go get a cone beam imaging uh, done or is there a different starting point even? Absolutely not. Um, so part of my protocol is, is a cone beam. Uh, yeah. I have a saying, I said, if there's no cone beam, there's no diagnosis. 
Right. Yeah. Because you cannot see what you cannot see in two-dimensional. Yes. You have to have the third dimension, especially on multi-rooted teeth like upper molars. You know, they have three roots. And the cone, the, the x-ray beams in two, two dimensional are coming sideways. And it's too dense in between all these roots to see anything that's happening in between the roots. But now all of a sudden, when you can see in between these roots and you can see down inside, you and that's why I said when I pull multi-rooted teeth like that, I go into the bone in between the roots. Because I want to see that blood coming out of there. I'm, that oil slick that comes out of there, that's not healthy blood. Yeah. It doesn't take anybody can look at that blood and say, there's an oil slick in that blood. That's not red blood. I've seen orange blood come out in between mm-hmm. dead teeth. And, you know, and, <laughs> so back to the cone beam thing, not only that, um, and diagnosis is a really important thing. Um, and, and we can certainly talk more about diagnosis on teeth that are vital as well. That's part of the biodentist way. Um, but for your listeners today, absolutely get a cone beam and, and also go to a dentist that's going to interpret this mm. in such a way that what they're looking for is not just um, less bone density around dead teeth, but also look at the cavitation sites because most cone beams, if not all, have the ability to measure bone density in in what's called Hounsfield units. We can we can cursor over the area in the bone marrow and we can see if it's positive or negative. And if it if it's negative, it's for sure. You've got a lack of mineralization in the in the bone. And the question's always what's in there. And typically it's it's the hidden gangrene. Um, there's a there's a good book that's out that I want I want to mention here. It's Tom Levy's book called Hidden Ep- Ed, um, Hidden Epidemic. And that's our patient on the cover of that book. And we worked closely with Dr. Levy and this patient, um, she showed up with at least a dozen root canals and had all kinds of health problems. And just, you know, you feel like you're dying when you have that much death in your body. I I can see why. And um, so we, over the course of time, um, went through the biodentist way, you know, you know, it took about two years to finish the case because it involved a lot of implants and bone grafts and things like that. But, and, and that's kind of on the extreme, but, you know, there are some people that are in that condition where they just don't want to lose all their teeth, but my goodness to have the, you know, tooth replacements are always compromises, even, even zirconia implants, which I love. I have them in my own mouth. After having titanium, I took it all out and put zirconia in now, and what a difference it makes. Unbelievable. Um, but, you know, the, not everybody can really wrap their head around that or has the the financial resources to do something like that. But even because re, even replacing teeth with a well-fitting denture that has sharp teeth in it, you know, I'm a lab te- technician. I make a lot of my own appliances and you can't see them. You, you know, you look in the mouth, you see nothing but sharp teeth and well-fitting appliances. And that's another option as well. Um, of course, you lose a fair amount of bone going that direction, but um, th- and that's the big advantage to implants is they're much more like real teeth. But um, but to get your health back yeah. is the main thing. You got to start with with you know with really being thorough and having the right proper diagnosis. And cone beam is absolutely part of that, and so is heart rate variability. Mm. Yeah, we look at that as well. We th- we feel like heart rate HRV is a real important piece to to really just let us know is the patient in sympathetic or parasympathetic lockdown, which really changes our approach to doing dentistry at that point. So yeah, yeah very cool. We use HRV as well. Which system are you using? Um, my wife is here. She can tell you. It's uh, it's the autonomic nervous system. It's a very high level uh, autonomic testing. From Dr. Rao. Yeah. No, from, okay. Yeah, we use a uh, here heart quest from Dr. Michael Kessler. That's, that's similar to, I think, what Rao uses as well. But really looking at the ANS or, you know, um, uh, as far as balancing, right? And understanding, are you in that sympathetic state, overstressed? Then you yep. have hormonal imbalance, everything else. So that's very cool that a dentist, you know, could use that and is applying these things to really analyze. And like you said, truly diagnose. Now, I wanted to also provide some people, not just the doom and gloom of everything, but a little bit of positivity right. and, and yeah. prevention, because there, there are a lot of people out there that could say, hey, listen, I've never had a root canal. I'm pretty you know, healthy as far as that, but I am weary. You know, the, the, the foods we eat are more toxic. There's more sugar in everything. And 
more kind of artificial things and everything, more toxins in general are entering the body and that's going to impact that. So what are your top preventive tips for not getting infections in the teeth? Well, great question. So those patients that might be saying that to, that to themselves right now, maybe sometime in their life might encounter a tooth that's starting to become temperature sensitive. Mm. Okay, to cold. Okay. Yeah. So so I think that that's um a really important discussion to have because at you know, teeth are very mechanical and the tooth is the only body part that cannot swell. It cannot expand. If it could, it would. So when there's an inflammatory response inside of a tooth, it manifests as a temperature sensitive, okay, or pressure sensitivity or both, okay? So for those of your patients right now that are seemingly perfectly healthy, their teeth work great and their breath doesn't smell and everything looks fine and they chew fine and they don't have food traps and they don't have bleeding gums, for all those people that are that healthy, that's great. Um, stay on the path and and you know learn everything you can about your mouth. But for those of the those people who have been healthy for many years and now all, all of a sudden are starting to have things like temperature sensitivity show up with the tooth. Okay, like I said earlier, a tooth is the only body part that cannot swell. And <clears throat> what that means is the inflammatory response inside of a tooth that's now manifesting in temperature sensitivity is different inside of the tooth than everywhere else in the body because the tooth cannot swell, mm. okay? And why does the body part swell? It swells because, because the body is calling for more exchange of fluids, whether that's blood, or lymph, the immune system, whatever. Whatever blood brings, blood brings oxygen, nutrition, minerals, the immune system, and the lymphatic system, even on the micro, which is the, the matrix, okay, the inner ocean, and the macro, which is the lymphatic system, the lymph nodes, okay, that has to drain. So you've got this exchange of fluid, and that's involved in the swelling process. So in biological medicine, we believe that inflammation is a tool that is to, the, the, the power of inflammation is meant to be harnessed, not to be suppressed. Okay. And that's kind of a different, difficult thing when you got a tooth going off. It, it was cold sensitive. Now it just downright hurts all the time. It throbs. Okay. So the tooth, what's happening is it's setting up, a, it, it's, it's accepting more blood because it needs more buffers. Maybe the problem with the tooth is a cavity. Okay. Maybe it's decay. Maybe the tooth is stress fractured. Maybe a person grinds their teeth. Um, maybe the tooth is bending. Okay. Uh, maybe it's loose. Okay. And it's blood supply is threatened or, or all the above, all of these conditions could be going on. Um, but a tooth is in, under its own inflammatory response. And with that inflammatory response inside that tooth, it sets up a blood pressure gradient inside the tooth. Okay. So now because the tooth has accepted more blood because it needs more buffer to buffer all the acid attack, if it's decay or trauma or stress fracture, you see, um, then it's, so now the blood pressure inside the tooth is higher than the rest of the body. And when we think about that, that's very interesting because it's a lot like a tourniquet at that point, because when the heart beats at a certain pre and there's blood, the, the cardiovascular systems at a certain pressure, that blood is not able to get inside that tooth. Okay. And that's why I say it's like a tourniquet, because at that point, a tooth is by design, cutting off its own blood supply, okay? And for a lot of people, and this is typically when a tooth is very near its, its own death experience, okay? Because a tooth will only be able to survive such a thing for a matter of days if, if, if there's no intervention there, okay? And again, even biological dentists will say, well, you need a root canal, we got a laser, it's going to be fine, but it's still a death experience for your tooth. And my passion is to keep that tooth alive as long as the death hasn't gotten too far inside that tooth. You must have a cone beam. You must know prolozone therapy. This is where ozone gets involved. This is where we use Swiss biological injectables like procaine and uh, uh, homeopathy, B12, um, ozone gas, um, and then do the dentistry. Get the decay out of the tooth. Uh, if it's stress fractured, you know, bond the tooth together, make it stronger. Even if it's temporary, just get the conditions changed. So the blood, so the blood supply inside the tooth, the tooth can start to regulate that, get that blood pressure back down. So that cold sensitivity goes away and the tooth can actually heal itself. 
Okay. So for dentists to become tooth healers, okay, we must get the body. You can't have a leaky gut and and continue, uh, you know, you, you and you got to know HRV in order to do this. And you've got to, um, you've got to address what I call the inner ocean, which is the extracellular matrix. You can, I believe you can never go wrong by treating the matrix, you know, improve upregulating the matrix doesn't come with side effects, doesn't come with problems. It comes with the results. Okay. And we get the gut system working better. And therefore the gut biome is now starting to uh, uh, upregulate towards probiotic because the conditions have been changed. So the bugs are starting to take care of themselves in ways that are incredibly powerful. Okay. Rather than try and take a bunch of probiotics and putting it in the wrong conditions. And those bugs are morphing in the wrong, wrong ways. Okay. This is a biome situation as well. And I'm talking about trying to save the life of a tooth here. Okay. But this is, these are all the forces that are at play as a dentist is, is trying to help a patient heal their own tooth. Cause I think that's what patients want. Oh, yeah. They want their mouths healed. Okay. They want the gut system, they, the gap junctions to be tightened. You want your teeth long, sharp, and beautiful, easy to keep clean. Um, I think that's what people want. So for those of your listeners that are listening now that are very healthy, but maybe have a friend or maybe have a loved one that is going through a dental, it's like, what the hell do I do with this tooth? You know, and, or, 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 or even, uh, you know, a teenager that's coming up in life thinking about getting their wisdom teeth out you know, you better not, I'm, I'm a, I'm a strong proponent of this being done biologically. Okay. And, um, and, and even surgical procedures, very, very important. This is why I'm training dentists right now. And I'm training doctors and health professionals right now so that they can understand the importance of the mouth to the rest of the body and how do we prevent root canals? Okay. From happening in the first place. And what's unique about a tooth because it can't swell, what's unique about that? And what's unique about the approach to that so that we take that inflammatory response and we steer it instead of suppress it or remove it completely by killing the tooth. Okay. Right. right. No, so much of prevention I've found, whether it's in dentistry or just in health in general and in, in your body is, is listening to the whispers of the symptoms before they become screams. Right. And if you listen to the whispers, the, the sensitivity you know, and everything that is the whisper of, oh, this is cool. I'm feeling it. I need to do something. I need to act. My body is telling me. And then to be, that is prevention. That's true prevention. Um, so t- tell, tell us when is the book coming out? What can we expect from that? <laughs> I, I want to hear about, I'm, I always am looking yeah. for a good book to read. Well, the book is probably, and you know, I'm still a practicing dentist. So I'm um, it's tough, right? Yeah, it's tough. You know, I'm, I'm in full-time business right now. Yeah. I write on the weekends. Um, when's the book coming out? It's it's going to be a while. Uh, you know, building the protocols took me the better part of eight or nine years, and uh, you know, um, I'm I'll say a couple of years. Um, yeah. You know, our you do it. Uh, our goal right now is to um, just really get the word out um, and where people can you know they can be in my my online classes. And just get the education started. And for the few people who become patients here, um, uh, because they really see the value of coming to Denver and spending time with us um, and really getting it done a certain way, well, you know, there's still that. But, uh, you know, my passion has always been a teacher. Um, You know, Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. And this is the change I want to see in the world. I, I I heard a lot of people early on when I was a traditional dentist, and even when I was a semi-biological dentist, because there's a great disparity between, you know, you can go to a weekend course and call yourself a biological dentist. It's not regulated. Right. Like, and there's a spectrum, there's a scale, you know, and, and we're clear over here on this, this very strict end. You know, we don't give people oral antibiotics unless we absolutely have to, because we don't need them. Right. So that puts us clear over here, you know, so, you know, just the changes that are, um, that are, uh, just really necessary to, uh, bring about that change in the world. Um, so yeah, um, a couple of years, we'll see, maybe sooner. Hey, listen, you, you got a lot on your plate and I do think yeah. now is the time we need to educate 
people and and make them aware that there is another way. Because I think so many people that I even speak to and doctors themselves say, well, what else is there? You know, they think it's only this way. They still have their blinders on and aren't even experiencing or hearing about anything else that may be out there. Biological dentistry, European biological medicine. I mean, my father traveled the world to try and do this. But nowadays you have people like yourself right in the backyard who are teaching others. So that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so thank you for that. And where can people learn more about you? If there's doctors listening, where can they, uh, you know, learn from you also, or if there's patients listening, where can they become your patient? Well, everybody can find me at biodentist.com, B-I-O-D-E-N-T-I-S-T.com, biodentist.com. Um, that's the, that's my dental office. Um, they can also go to the human universal health Institute and that's the larger 20,000 foot campus that we have here. We built an Institute around the dental experience here. Um, and that's H for human U for universal H for health Institute.com. So H U H Institute.com is really the, um, the overarching website that houses biodentist, biovital, and also our nonprofit is called Biologic. Um, and they can go to the HUH Institute and become uh, sign up and be on our email list. And when uh, when I have classes, there'll be announcements. Um, I think the next we have one coming up here. Um, I'll be training dentists on October twentieth, twenty and twenty one of this year. Um, we're also going to have, uh, a, I will be having a training for doctors and chiropractors and nature paths and health nutritionists and healers and acupuncturists and, you know, just outside the scope of dentistry, but really designed more about what's happening in the body and why the body, why the mouth is important to the body so they can see it differently. Um, that's going to be coming up in October. Um, uh, the next, what we call the founder's message. That's my Monday evening Zoom online class for new patients uh, that are interested in what we do. And even if you don't become a new patient, you can still uh, jump into my online class. That'll be on March 27th. And you can sign up at that at huhinstitute.com slash events. And that's a free class uh, on the evening of March 27th. And I will do a little deeper dive into just all of the Biodentist Way protocols um, and, uh, how we go about things. And, um, and for those of you that are listening that have a dentist that you like, tell your dentist that there's, there's good education out there and that there's just, there, there can be another level of how to look at the mouth and how to treat the mouth and get the body involved in the process. So, um, you know, that's really what we do here. Yeah. So vitally important to get others on board. If we want to see this carry forward and really protect our greatest wealth, which is health. So yeah. Dr. John, thank you again for coming on. Really appreciate it. We'd love to have you on again. Hopefully that book gets uh, done. We could talk about that in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And in closing, I'd like to say, I'd like to say something. Please. Um, it is our goal to start a revolution here. And it, this revolution in healthcare and integrated biological medicine and dentistry. And um, I envision a day when money is not the the obstacle to overcome and when insurance covers the entire body so for instance if you can get a hundred thousand dollars worth of chemo because you have cancer why can't you get a hundred thousand dollars in your mouth because that's what's driving it okay and we just stop this separation between how the insurance industry separated the mouth and the body okay to stop that and bring that all back together okay and fix our food supply so that we have real soil and real water so that we have real plants. And, you know, we're, that's what we're doing here at the HOH Institute is we just, we dream of a day when we can see that re- that consciousness really coming around into the healthcare, healthcare realm and where doctors are, th- are think integrated instead of separatists and Newtonian, you know, we really want to bring this together just like the laws of biology, physics, and chemistry. Mm-hmm. Obey. So I just want to leave that with everybody that there is a consciousness and it is rising. And um, you know, as humans here in our little bubble at here in Denver at HUH Institute, we are this is the work that we're doing so that we can spread the good news. And we have a lot of good news. Yeah. yeah that, no, there's there's a ton of good news out there and this revolution, it is happening. And you're yeah. you're a part of that. We could all should be a part of that. 
because we yeah. do owe it to ourselves to live as healthy as possible. And yeah. part of that means caring for what happens in our mouth as the portal to the rest of our body. Check yeah. out Dr. J- uh, John's websites, biodentist.com, H-U-H-institute.com. And until next time, keep writing your own healing story. <laughs>